Excuse me, are you Adam Graham? The very same, and this is my old-time radio snack wagon. Welcome to the old-time radio snack wagon, where we serve up a bite-sized portion of old-time radio. And now, here's your snack wagon host, Adam Graham. Welcome to the Old Time Radio Snack Wagon. As this episode is released, we're only a few days away from Thanksgiving here in the United States. Of course, I know we have listeners in other lands, including Canada, which celebrated in October. But for us Americans, this is a big week. We've got two other podcasts with Thanksgiving episodes releasing this week. On Sunday, The Great Detectives of Old Time Radio featured its Thanksgiving special, and we also have a special coming up on The Amazing World of Radio on Wednesday, and you can find both of those over at our website at greatdetectives.net. It seems appropriate that our order be Thanksgiving appetizing, so we're bringing you three smaller Old Time Radio snacks this week. First up, we're going to give you a little taste of One Night Stand. One Night Stand was a unique show. It began over NBC, but worked best as a production of the Armed Forces Radio Service. The series featured band remotes from across America. In many cases, these were from L.A. or New York, but could also be anywhere in the country where a good band was playing. Sometimes you'd hear from prominent and well-known band leaders of the era, like... Count Basie or Guy Lombardo. But again, you could hear from band leaders no one has heard of today. If you were in a barrack, ship, or military hospital, these uh, programs represented half an hour where you could close your eyes and find yourself in a night club or fancy hotel ballroom listening to an amazing band. If you listen to One Night Stand episodes from the late 1940s, you'll hear a lot of the same great uh, dance favorites of the era. But sometimes you'll hear something different, something original, something that speaks a universal human language. So apropos for Thanksgiving, even though it wasn't written that way, we go to Bobby Sherwood at the Abaddon Ballroom in Los Angeles from June 3rd, 1946, on One Night Stand. Here at the West's newest dining and dancing center, our Abaddon dancers enjoy the music of two fine bands, Bobby Sherwood and his orchestra, whom you're hearing tonight, and Jan Garber and his fine music, who combine to give Western dancers the finest in American dance music. Now, here's Bobby Sherwood's original tune, which is based on the famous old chow call. Bobby calls it, Let's Eat. Let's eat I'm hungry Now please don't think I'm rude You're sweet And lovely But I'm in a mood for food Your kiss Is thrilling Now please don't think I'm crude But it's A filling when I'm in a mood for food You've made me know what bliss is So don't think I'm a dummy But I can't go for kisses On an empty tummy Let's eat I'm starving Then love can be renewed Right now, my darling I'm in a mood for food So don't think I'm a dummy But I can't go for kisses On an empty tummy Let's eat I'm starving Then love can be renewed Right now, my darling I'm in a mood for food Love can be renewed 
mood right now, my darling. I'm in a mood, the mood for food. Now look here. Baby, let's go down to the rest and get some of that fine home cooking. Next up, we turn to Allen's Alley, or the remains thereof. Allen's Alley was a feature of comedian Fred Allen's 1940s radio programs. He'd take a news item or just a general question and put it to the denizens of Allen's Alley. Generally, these characters, through a long, circuitous route uh, of various jokes and stories, might actually get to an answer. The series featured many notable characters like poet Falstaff Openshaw, Senator Claghorn, and Titus Moody. Allen's Alley's pop culture influence is felt to this day as Senator Claghorn would become the inspiration for Warner Brothers' cartoon character Foghorn Leghorn. But all the original Allen's Alley characters would disappear forever when Fred Allen ended his radio program in 1949. Except for one. Falstaff Openshaw had so much popularity that he got an original series over ABC that was unearthed by Randy Riddle in 2008. The five-minute program sponsored by the Mars Candy Company starred the actor who portrayed Falstaff on the radio, Alan Reed, who is best known for originating the role of Fred Flintstone on television. Also starred in the series was Reed's then 14-year-old son, Alan Reed Jr. Here, from November 23, 1950, is Falstaff's Fables, with the episode, Why We Have Turkey on Thanksgiving. Hello. Have you heard the Thanksgiving turkey to the cranberry said? I wouldn't be here today if I hadn't lost my head. Yes, it's radio's famous poet, Falstaff Openshaw, with Falstaff's Fables. Transcribed Monday through Friday by Mars Incorporated, makers of Milky Way, the malted milk candy bar. Light, soft nougat, real malted milk, smooth, creamy caramel, all wrapped in extra thick, pure milk chocolate. When you crave good candy, have a Milky Way. Now, Falstaff Openshaw with Falstaff Jr. and a special Thanksgiving fable. Ready, Falstaff? Precisely why I am here. Shouldst. Mightst. Rightst. Friends, have you ever wondered why we have turkey for Thanksgiving? The turkey would be more thankful if it was only living. So true, lad. Thank you, Dad. But despite the fact that turkeys are the ones that get us stuck, we shall trace the custom way back to Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock? Dad, aren't you losing your touch? Go away, lad, before you get in Dutch. And before my story gets confused and altogether murky, let me take just a moment to really talk turkey. Want a treat that you can't beat? A taste that's pure delight? Then I say try Milky Way. Brother, it's just right. By all means, try it. Make a note to buy it whenever you crave good candy. Beyond compare, sold everywhere. Get Milky Way. It's dandy. And now, Falstaff's Fable. <laughs> There lived way back in Pilgrim days, when men shot blunderbusses, a gal who'd make most movie queens look sad as octopuses. Among the guys who cast their eyes on this fair maid Priscilla was Captain Standish, known as Miles. Said he, Thou art a killer diller. The one thing I intendest to do is to makest her my intended. But I just can't ask her face to face. And phones ain't been invented. This is a spot I seest now where help needs must be called in. I needs must workest some other jackest. Ah, here comes my pal, John Alden. Good morrow to thee, Captain Miles. I am at thine disposal. Uh, doest this for me, will you? Goest thou to Priscilla 
and makest for me a proposal. Priscilla, I'm here from Miles. I mean, I'm Miles from here. I mean, oh, gee, when thou lookest at me, my thoughts seem to strip us to gear. I know what you meanest, Priscilla said. Come closer, thou poor silly creature. I never dreamt that you cared, but I'm all prepared. In the next room, I've got us to preach her. Said Alden later to Captain Miles. Gee, pal, the next thing that I heard, she was saying, I do, and we were one instead of two. It looketh like thou got the bird. Yes, I got us the bird, but in truth, so did thou. That I can leave my bird when I may. From now on, you'll be sticking at home with your chicken. And that, my friends, is the absolute unvarnished lie as to why we have turkey today. Thirty days hath September, April, June, and November. I'm not jealous. Let them have their days. Guess what I've got? Some milky ways. Good night. Falstaff's Fable, starring Alan Reed, Sr. and Jr., with a rhyming hand from D.H. Johnson, is presented by Mars Incorporated, makers of famous Milky Way candy bars. Yes, whenever you crave good candy, wherever our flags unfurled, always say Milky Way. <laughs> Milky Way is out of this world. Dick Tufel speaking. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. I appreciated that they acknowledged that the story wasn't true, although the listener can be forgiven if they'd rather that Falstaff had talked turkey about the topic. And it should be noted that during this era, it was really popular for programs to do takes on the courtship of Miles Standish, even though that story doesn't have anything directly to do with Thanksgiving, it just has to do with pilgrims. Now, while this episode has focused on the food aspect of Thanksgiving, there's more to why Americans celebrate Thanksgiving. You can talk about it at length, but sometimes you can also say it in a very simple and direct way. Such is the case with this message from Bob Bailey. At the end of an episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, that really had nothing to do with Thanksgiving. So here now from November 18th, 1956, is an excerpt from The Markham Matter. Now here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Before I do, I want to say something to you about Thanksgiving. Now, there's a day that deserves celebration. And heartfelt thanks to the God who made us for being able to live in the most free and peaceful and bountiful country in the world. And yet, why wait for next Thursday or any Thanksgiving day? For Americans, it seems to me, Thanksgiving should be every day. Think about it, won't you? Not much to add to that. I hope you enjoyed this little slice of old-time radio. It's a bit of a different episode but I think appropriate for the occasion. Once again, I want to wish all our listeners in the U.S. a happy Thanksgiving. Remember, you can check out Thanksgiving episodes of both the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio and the Amazing World of Radio over at our website at greatdetectives.net. And we'll be back next week with a more typical trait from the Old Time Radio Snack Wagon. It's time for me to close up the old snack wagon. But don't worry, we'll be back with another serving of old-time radio goodness before you know it. If you want to enjoy some of our longer-form podcasts, you can feast away at my website at greatdetectives.net. Your emails are also welcome at adam at snackwagon.net. The Old Time Radio Snack Wagon comes to you from Boise, Idaho. Your host is Adam Graham. Sound production is by Rhines Media, LLC. You can listen to past episodes of the Old Time Radio Snack Wagon as well as connect on social media at our website at snackwagon.net. Email suggestions for episodes to adam at snackwagon.net. This has been the Old Time Radio Snack Wagon. Until next time, goodbye.